Welcome to Pop Culture Retro, which was recently voted the 15th best podcast by the residents of the Golden Years Retirement Community in Boca Raton, Florida. Each show, we'll revisit some of your favorite pop culture memories with insider and outsider perspectives. Now, please help me welcome your hosts, Ike Eisenman and Jonathan Rosen. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Pop Culture Retro. And we are really excited today. Ike and I have been watching our guests' videos for the last two weeks. Uh, he's a Disney historian. He has written books, uh, comic books, and interviewed so many Disney celebrities. And he runs an amazing YouTube ch channel, which he calls Tolgiewood, which we're going to have to ask about that because I've already read it as Tolgiewood. <laughs> but <laughs> please help us welcome Jim Fanning. Jim, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you both doing? Awesome. Absolutely awesome. We're so delighted to have you. And I have to say, it, it, yeah, going through your uh, your webpage and your YouTube uh, channel is just was an incredible nostalgic ex experience for me in so many ways. And I don't want to, you know, like preempt, um, you know, setting all of that <laughs> up. But my gosh, you know, between your collecting and your 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 research and everything that you have on there, I was just like, I felt like I was revisiting my childhood. So it's it's fit really fantastic. Oh, well, that's great to hear. And especially coming from you, I because <laughs> you, you not only, uh, ha, you know, it was not only part of your childhood, but you and your childhood were part of it. <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, absolutely. I, I mean, I feel like I'm in like big Disney heaven today between the two of you. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I definitely feel I'm, I'm in Disney heaven. It's it's great, great honor to meet you both, and especially you, Ike. I've heard, I've always heard about you and heard what a great guy you are. So it's amazing to meet you virtually in person. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, I think this is going to be a fun show, and we're going to probably, gosh, you know, just between our content together, we're going to have a lot of stuff to to go That's over. Fun. So. Well, right. let, let's let, let's go dive right into that. Actually, all right. So, I, first thing I want to know is just how did you get started in this? How did you become a Disney historian? I mean, I, I'm looking at the things that you've done, and I'm like amazed. I mean, my mouth, my jaw drops. The all the like I said, the books and the conquests. Just how did you get involved in this to begin with? Well, it uh, I'm I'm literally a lifelong Disney fan. I mean, there's I can never remember a time when I didn't love Disney and was fascinated by it. And just as I was, you know, becoming more infatuated with Disney over the years, I mean, everything you would see from Disney would be so great. And, you know, some of it, you would see the re-releases and so forth. And some of it, of course, was older. So I just started wondering who was Walt Disney mm -hmm. and I started reading about him and everything I read was so fascinating. And one thing just led to another. So it just grew and grew and grew. And at the same time, in, in, as a child and in high school, I was an artist. So I wanted to be a Disney artist, but I kind of came to the conclusion that my skill wasn't great enough to be uh, a Disney artist. The more I learned about Disney artists, the more I was like, oh, wow. I don't yeah, know. it's that's a challenging, challenging thing to approach because I actually wanted to do the same thing. I was ah. a, an artist growing up, and I I think I came to the <laughs> same conclusion, even though I did present my portfolio when I was a teenager to um, the head of, of Disney Animation, and and they were actually quite supportive of me. But I I think I got a little bit too nervous about it. So I I get that. I I, I didn't think I didn't think I could stand up as tall as as those incredible geniuses. Well, you know the feeling. But I have a feeling you were better better than I was. <laughs> oh, <But> that, <laughs> well, that's amazing to hear. I, just another dimension to your story. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> With, and that was when you were already making Disney movies, I guess, then, right? Yes, yes. It was while I was doing Return from Witch Mountain. And um, and I and, and and honestly, like for me as an artist, um, I I I could draw, I don't want to, you know, take over this, but I, I I could draw before I could practically, you know, before I could read. So I've been drawing my entire life and and then fell in love with Disney art. And I taught myself to do caricature through um, learning how to draw Mickey Mouse and 
and then started trying to make up my own characters. And I poured through I, right here behind me, The Art of Disney. This is the book <laughs> oh, that probably yeah. taught me more about drawing and painting and watercolors than anything else that I had in my uh, little library at home. So I, I actually have the first edition of this, where, which yeah. was the you know the the hardcover one with the cardboard cut out of mickey and the cellophane wrap and it's that that cellophane wrap is is well worn out because i just (laughs) laid on the floor and would turn the pages and just stare so anyway yeah yeah, it was same with me i have the same book Ah, how wonderful i had to buy the newer edition just because the older one is it's an ancient tome i call it it's just called (laughs) art but the mickey mouse came off the cover and oh no yeah, and I think the, the plastic wrap was, is long gone, <laughs> but, but I still treasure it. Uh, so I, I think your fans are going to be amazed, as I am, to hear that you're also an artist on top of it, all your other talents. That, and at the same time, here you were making a major Disney live action movie, and you were trying to get into it. <laughs> And yeah. it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was it was um it was fun and they were very gracious about about looking at my work and and um I actually got an offer from them to to go to Cal Arts once I graduated oh, wow. high school. <laughs> yeah, it was an open offer and by the time I graduated high school I just I just thought I don't think this is the direction I I wanted to go. It's it's uh I think art, if you love art, art for a living is a tough thing. I think it takes a special person, you know, it, it's a combination of not just passion, but also dedication. And, and it's, you know, no matter how talented you are, it's really, really hard work. And if you're not quite aligned with all that, then it's probably not the best career path. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Hear, you. I hear you. And you, so are anyway. all, you are already quite the, the veteran of the, the gets <laughs> outs of showbiz. So yeah, I, yeah I, I had an established career and I thought, I don't know about switching gears is such the best idea right now anyway. So, but anyway, that's a little part, yeah, a little bit another layer of my history. So in my case, what I decided to do, I, I also love writing and I love reading the his, any kind of history, such as the, the Art of Walt Disney by Christopher Finch. So I was like, well, I, maybe I could do that. So I kind of went in that direction. So um, that's that's kind of what that happened. And I was curious to know, like, how how well did you know Ron Miller? Do you know? I never met Ron. I never met him once. <laughs> um, he <laughs> he was, you know, he as you know, the, the the executive producer of the of all the studio, you know, the studio work. I think he was more in his office most of the time. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I didn't really know even his reputation for visiting the sets or anything like that. He usually, uh, you know, let Jerome, Jerome Cortland was, um, you know, one of the producers that uh, at least on return from which I think, yeah, pretty sure he was on escape to Witch mountain as well. And yeah. he was the representative that, you know, came to the set and, and showed up and, it's sort sort of funny. Steve Martin has a joke about this as well, but you know you could always tell the producer because he had the sweater tied around his neck, <laughs> no matter what the weather was. And so that was Jerome Cortland. So he was. I had interaction. I had interaction with him, but I never uh, got a chance to meet Ron. Oh, well, I was very curious about that. That's that's very interesting. But anyhow, the reason I ask uh, is because Ron Miller is the one that gave me my start oh, well. at Disney. I I. I come from upstate New York. I'm a country boy. I come from a very small town. So <laughs> I, I literally wrote Ron Miller knowing that he was the head of the studio and said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm a writer. I would love to do something for Disney. So he was very, very gracious. He said, come on out. And we'll meet and talk about it. That's and amazing. He gave me, gave me a job in the mailroom and, and it just just went from there so that's the reader's digest condensed version of <laughs> no but that's, that's which part of new york you're from because jonathan that's right you're in the east are you in you're in new york no like i like i tell everyone you can't tell from my accent but i, I do come from new york originally <laughs> but i'm down from brooklyn area so i'm just curious where well, you're my, from. my mom was from the bronx but we lived in uh vestal which is near binghamton oh okay yes oh so, and vestal it's a very rural uh, very, very, it's, you know, it's farm country, basically. I know so, Binghamton. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, you know, I, you know, I usually have to say Vestal, and nobody's ever heard of that. Well, how about Binghamton, if they've ever heard of that, then I go up to Syracuse. <laughs> I just keep going. 
<laughs> but yeah, my, a lot of people have heard of Binghamton at least. No, now now we're yeah. both in Florida. Ike is in Florida. I'm in Florida. We're, we're several hours apart, but we're both down here in Florida now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I I did I did wonder, especially after our mix up with the. <laughs> time zone <laughs> <laughs> yeah we tend to forget you know it's a zoom meeting so time zones don't really count but you know you have to make sure everyone's on the same page it's funny <laughs> right. just, to, just to recap we were supposed to do this meeting last week and uh, you know ike and i were on one time zone expecting it jim was on another time we, we all said noon but we had different noons in mind <laughs> <laughs> So you, that's, so you got your start. So Jim, you got you got you got your start in through there. So how did you start going from there to working in, you know, writing all these books? I mean, these books are made. And then, I mean, I'll, I'll ask one thing at a time. Let's start with the books first. Well, gosh, I'm not even sure. That's a great question. I'm not even sure I particularly remember how that happened. I I, I started working. I guess it's that I started working for the Disney employee newsletter. Uh, Disney Newsreel, which I, I'm sure you remember. I do, and, yes. And then also Disney News Magazine. And I was actually going to try to find the issue that has that great poster for Escape from Witch, Witch Mountain on the back cover. I, <laughs> ah. I put it up on my blog. It's one of the best Disney posters ever. Oh, so it's, yeah. It's, it's such a great, you know, which one I'm talking about with the kind of the blue and the stylized and. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it is a beautiful piece of art. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. But anyhow, um, I started working for publications, uh, you know, periodicals, I guess you would say. And of course that's been the main, mainstay of my career. Even to this day, I, I, I work on uh, magazines that are public as well. I mean, in addition to the ones published in the United States, like Disney 23, uh, I work on publications that are published in, in Japan and um, France, for example. So anyhow, I guess just because I was working, I was a writer and doing Disney history for those uh, publications back then, then it just started to happen that people in publishing noticed in terms of books. So uh, it's all about it's all about connections and it's all about mm -hmm. working. I, I don't think I've ever gotten a single thing where I've proposed something and somebody said, oh, great idea. It's always been somebody coming to me. <laughs> wow. And, and, you know, saying, would you do such and such? So um, I've been very, very lucky my entire career because I have known some incredible people that have been in, 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 so supportive and so helpful. Uh, without them, I without them I wouldn't know. Certainly, Dave Smith in the archives uh, was 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 a champion of mine, and he recommended me for many many jobs. <laughs> oh, that's that's wonderful. I love Dave. Oh man, I really did. Yes, and over the yeah. years, Dave Dave mentioned you many times. I oh really? Oh my gosh! Oh yeah. my gosh! That's just that's making me a little verklempt. I, I, <laughs> I miss him terribly. I do. And it was such an honor. And, uh, you know, yeah, I sort of, I want to tell, I just want to tell the, the story about how I met him. And I, I, because it's so typical Dave and, and I, I, I remember, and I, I don't wish, know which project it was I was working on, but I was at the studio and I was a very curious young child and I used to wander the studio. I had, I could just go wherever I wanted to go, including all through the animation building, which was incredible. Um, but I started wandering around different buildings and I found a door called the archives. And I thought, what, I, I didn't know what it was and it had a sign on it, but it was open. And there was just all this memorabilia inside and I thought, all right, I'm going to go in and just see what it is. So I walk in and it's a small room. It was back in my day when I first encountered it, it was very small. Dave yeah. had his office off to the side and it was like a wall of books. There were some glass cases in front, a couple of other cases around um, and not a whole lot of material on display. But this case in front had um the uh the the acrylic paintings the multi-layer paintings from the from pinocchio on it and of course i was aware of it from reading this book ad nauseum 
And I just was standing over the case, like my nose like this to it, <laughs> just fascinated by the painting. And all of a sudden I heard over my shoulder, can I help you with something? And I, I jumped, he scared me to death because I was so engrossed in it. And he ended up introducing himself and I introduced myself and, and he was kind of curious that there was a child, you know, <laughs> unaccompanied in right. there. So I, I just said to, I just said, I'm, my name's Ike Eisenman, I'm working over on stage, da -da -da, on this and this. And he says, oh, Ike from Escape to Rich Mountain. Yes, yes, yes. And so we started chatting. Well, he gave me a little mini tour took me to a back door that he opened up onto the biggest closet I've ever seen in my life that was just packed with stuff from movies and TV shows and all that and piles and boxes and it was in disarray. And he said, he reached into a pile of sweaters and, and costumes and picked up this Mickey Mouse Club sweater and handed it to me. And he said, this was Annette Funicello's. This is what she wore on the show. <laughs> And I'm holding it in my hand going, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. And he just sort of waved his hand around and he says, this is now my job. I have to put all of this in some kind of order. And I just looked up and I thought, oh, wow, how does anyone handle that? So that was my introduction to Dave. And we, we remained friends for, obviously, up until the very end. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's wonderful to hear. And that's what I was referring to earlier when I said I've, I've heard about you for such a long time. <laughs> he spoke so highly of you. Oh, that's uh, so kind. I should have said, well, hey, then why can't we get together if this guy's so great? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been lovely, of course. <laughs> uh, right. But but we're, meet, we're meeting now. So that's good. And it's good <laughs> to be able to talk to Dave and talk about Dave. But uh, yeah, he was he was incredibly kind and, and supportive. And if anybody, it seemed like just about anybody that would call the archives that they needed somebody to do some research or they needed somebody to write something, he would recommend me. So it, that's great. Yeah, it, I just owe so much to him. Mm -hmm. And luckily for me, my association with the archives has continued and they continue to be very supportive of people that now run it it's it's so much bigger than it ever was back then that's for sure i oh, i don't know if you've seen it i've seen i saw it in 2009 um okay. my wife and i went to visit the studio when we were in la for the uh race to witch mountain premiere and i insisted on taking her to the studio because she had never been obviously she's uh wasn't from there and so I said, the one place we have to go, I'm going to show you everything, but the one place we have to go is the archives. And I, they just rolled out the red carpet and it was so fun. And it was just beautiful. Oh. I mean, stunning. It's like, it's, it is like, I mean, it's just stunning. It's very stunning. And yeah. anyone who gets a chance to tour the, the studio, which I know is rare, but uh, if they do, yeah. they, they need to see it because it's just amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really state of the art. And I mean, they now have, of course, nobody from the public would see this, but they now have mm -hmm. warehouses. They have warehouses with, with you know, ships from Pirates of the Caribbean and, you know, automobiles and everything you can think of. So, oh, I'm and, sure. And, and yeah. including the, you know, the, I'm sure you thought they have the scale model of the Winnebago from, from the Escape from Richard. Yes, so. they, <laughs> they, they brought it out for me. I, I, I'm going to have to post this. And I keep mentioning things now on, on the shows we're doing about things I have to post, but I have a picture of me with uh, the Winnebago. And I, I don't remember who was the head of the archives in 2009, but um, yeah, he brought it out specifically so that we could all, everyone could take pictures of me with the Winnebago. It was absolutely <laughs> fantastic because I didn't get to see it during shooting. And um, oh, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Well, that is so cool. I'm so glad to hear it. So anyhow, I took before that I, I think I always picture like the Indiana Jones warehouse in Disney thing, like all these crates going all over <laughs> rows and rows deep. You know? Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> so you, you are also now you you're still doing actively doing the comic books now as well. Yes, not as much as I used to, but um, uh, every once in a while, I would certainly love to do more. Uh, Comic book writing is my favorite kind of writing, period. Really? I absolutely have always loved comics. I love comics and I, I love writing for them. And in recent years, um, I've gotten to do some DC 
Uh, oh, great. Uh, meaning, and when I say DC, it's Looney Tunes. <laughs> say, you guys, you guys are so into the whole pop culture world. You probably know they recently did these mashups of the Looney Tunes characters with the DC superheroes. <laughs> I, so, I do. <laughs> yeah. No, do, yeah. They, do they so, give you leeway? Do they let you go with whatever you want to write or you have to stick within a certain guideline of plot for like Disney and DC for like these things? Well, it, it yes and no. I mean, you have to, usually you're the one coming up with the story. So it's kind of up to you, but there are, there are parameters. Now for the DC thing, I don't really, I don't really know. I mean, it was such a wild thing anyhow, because they were, they were teaming up like Elmer Fudd and Batman. <laughs> and I forget some of the, some of the, what, I mean, I did like Martian, Marvin Martian and Martian Manhunter. And I didn't think <laughs> that, that makes sense. So, but we did, um, <coughs> we meaning, because I did these with, the artist John Loter, who is who is spectacular, and mm -hmm. he, he's a he's known around the world as a great Disney artist, but he also is superb at the Looney Tunes characters as well, and many other things. So anyhow, we did um, Porky Pig and Lex Luthor. Now there's, there's <laughs> oh <laughs> my the goodness, that was waiting to happen. <laughs> so oh wow. He, so we did talk about it and we said, now, are we allowed to use Superman? Can, can, we use, can we use Superman in this story? And we didn't know. So we just went ahead and, and said, well, and I think it was actually John's idea to do, do it more like he's more in the background. And so we'll do like a silhouette for Superman. <laughs> so you never see Superman, but I mean, in his full figure, but he's there. And it ended, I thought it ended up being a very sophisticated way of doing the story uh, because the focus was on Lex and of course, Porky Pig. <laughs> <laughs> so we never asked and, they, and then when we proposed that, they never said, no, we cannot use Superman. Uh, we don't want to use Superman in the story that's so focused on, on Lex Luthor. So we were never given any guidelines at all. <laughs> but but I'm sure there were. I'm sure we just didn't stumble across, you know, and we didn't come across any stumbling block. Well, that, that's amazing. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm really fascinated. I saw that you know you have all these comic books in all these other countries, uh, you know that, and you have a lot of stories that were never even seen here. That I read too. To. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. That that's amazing. I, I just want to segue a little bit into that. You've also you mentioned the historian. You've you've done so many fascinating interviews. Uh, with some big, di I, 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 you did Catherine Beaumont, you did the Sherman brothers. I actually reached out uh, to one of the sons of the Sherman brothers. He's going to come on in a few weeks, hopefully. But oh, uh, great, yeah. Great. But uh, you, what were some of your favorites? I mean, can you tell us about some of the interviews that you've done? And... Well, sure. I mean, everybody. I mean, again, in in my experience, the world of Disney has been full of the most wonderful, gracious people. That has been my experience almost without exception. And I don't know if that's, that's been your experience, Ike, as well, but I, I think there is just something about the type of person that Walt Disney himself attracted. And I think that has continued. Um, so there, there is just something about the integrity of the people that worked with him. So in terms of any time I've interviewed anybody that actually worked with Walt Disney, they were so talented, obviously, and so humble, so humble, and, and therefore so giving and so willing to help, you know, whatever, whatever I might be working on. And so that's a general statement, but my favorites, um, Gosh, I mean, Mark Davis, the, the famous Disney animator and Imagineer, he was, he was absolutely wonderful in his, in his giving and his giving of his time. And the same with his wife, Alice, who's still with us. Uh, and then um, Frank and Ollie, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, the 
most people know who they are. Again, they were they were members of the nine old men. They were each extremely giving of their time and and just anything you wanted to talk about. And I think especially in the case of Frank and Ollie, what I always say about them is that they were actually historians because you know they wrote four books. They wrote The Illusion of Life, which is probably the book on Disney animation. And I, I'm sure you have that one. <laughs> I don't, believe it or not, I'm oh. embarrassed to say I don't. And all of a sudden you're, <laughs> I keep thinking about, okay, what do I want to read next? And all of a sudden I just, I was making a note. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's like an enormous, volume it's it's like 500 pages or something it's it's huge but you could spend all your time just looking at the the images yeah let alone their you know their writing and their insights and everything um so they were always fascinating to talk to they had such great memories not i don't mean even just the stories they remembered i mean the fact that they remembered what they remembered they uh. remembered everything and you could bring up anybody <laughs> And they would have stories about that person and be able to talk about their contributions. And then the Sherman brothers, they hold a very, very, very dear place in my heart. Uh, I, had, I had loved them before I knew them just because of their contributions and their beautiful, wonderful songs. I mean, nothing, you know, you cannot say enough about their talent and what they've done. And then they were just such great gentlemen. Uh, and again, extremely giving. Uh, Bob left us some years ago. Dick is still with us, thank God, he's in his 90s. But um, mm. at least before the pandemic, I don't know now, but he was he was still very active. Uh, so and still writing songs, you know, that the, the Christopher Robin movie, the live action one with Ian McGregor, that wow. came out just a few years ago and he right. wrote he wrote like three new songs and he's in it and <laughs> wow yeah so richard sherman in particular was was and is very supportive uh of of me so obviously i <laughs> you know i really appreciate that and i'm stunned every time i you know meet with him or come across him at a party or events or something and he's so effusive uh, and he's always so he always says, uh, we really appreciate the wonderful words you've written about us. And I'm like, well, you, you wrote, oh. you wrote Feed the Birds. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, it's a small world. So never mind what I wrote. <laughs> but, <laughs> so again, I can just That's right fantastic. now, I can't believe it. So those are a few examples, but gosh, everybody, um, everybody that's very well known and some people that are not are not very well known. Everybody's been absolutely fantastic. I, I, will, I, I will say that, yeah, that was my experience with everyone that I ever worked with at the studio. It didn't matter who they were from, you know, from the grips to the craft service to the, you know, cinematographers, everyone was, um, because, you know, Disney in terms of production, and I know in other areas, and Jim, you would know more about this than I do, was a family. It was a family environment. They kept, you know, the you know the people who worked there stayed there. And I remember for like even decades after, uh, a full decade after I, you know, um, had left the industry, I was still working at uh, at Walt Disney Studios doing uh, ADR voice work, and we worked at their um, incredible B stage recording facility on a highly regular basis and I would still run into guys that I worked with back going as far back as which mountain they just say hey Ike how you doing and wave and they were just everyone loved to be there they just loved to be there no one wanted to leave including me you know I really didn't I was very fortunate that I continued even though I wasn't working for Disney continued to work at the lot and be around that environment for you know most of my uh most of my adult life so yeah but yeah I found exactly the same experience Fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. You know, I, I, I don't have, I mean, I don't have the personal experience. I've interviewed several people uh, who were participating in Disney uh, productions and they all mentioned a lot of the same things. I was always, uh, they mentioned that Walt would, you know, look after them personally. Um, I, I, I know you interviewed Catherine Beaumont. 
um, which yeah, I, I've tried to reach out to, I cannot find her still, but I, I did interview Margaret Carey, who uh, was the model for Tinkerbell. And she was, she was uh, just raving. I mean, she was, she had so many good memories that uh, she gave me about her time there at uh, Disney. Yeah, yeah. She has quite, quite a few stories and yeah, it's true. I it just, it just seems like everybody had great experiences. I mean, I, I, one person that comes to mind, I mean, I never knew her or talked to her, but it was Suzanne Pochette. Mm -hmm. And she was always very vocal about how wonderful it was to work at Walt Disney Studios as opposed to any of the other studios. Um, and, you know, she had, she had stories about Walt, you know, you know, like one time she was about to start a new movie and she arrived at the gate and Walt Disney came out to meet her personally and apologized to her because her, the, the normal dressing room that she would have was not available because another movie had run over schedule. So he came out to apologize and said, as soon as the movies, the other movie's done, we'll move you into your usual dressing room. And she was like, who, what other studio head <laughs> would come out to the gate to talk wow. to <laughs> That's incredible. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had the same experiences, Ike. I'm sure you worked at, at some of the other places you worked with were not as, you know, as that didn't have that family feel No, there's, yeah. The, other studios are like movie and television factories. They're more like factories, you know, and, and it's not that people are disgruntled like they might be at a factory necessarily. It's just not the same. And it's just the, you know, the lot is, the lot itself is simply magical because even though, even though this, the studio itself has evolved, like the back lots, you know, I remember the back lot, I wandered, you know, the back lot when it existed and, you know, much of it has changed and, and been uh, built upon, but they've kept the core of it, uh, you know the same the same way and and yeah you know, I, I i don't know it's just mad it's just magical it's just magical and i always knew it would be i just felt like it would be i wanted to be a part of it so bad it was just such a huge part of my dreaming as a child to you know just do something for them and so you know having you know become and had an opportunity to be such an integral part of its history and and have it be a part of my professional life in that way has just been an incredible gift. Um, but yeah, it's just very different. You just walk on it. I mean, you know, there's squ squirrels running around that people hand feed during lunch. You know, it's it's like, it, I, I would watch this and say, okay, where did they wind up these mechanical, you know, creatures? <laughs> where were they invented and set loose? It's just, it's just like Snow White came in and waved her hand and the animals and birds just, it's just... <laughs> It's kind of that, it's that ridiculous. <laughs> well, I have a question then for both of you. I mean, do you think it's still that way today compared to other studios? Uh, me? Both of you. I or mean, both, you, I mean, I mean, uh, Jim, Jim would, would know more. Yeah. I know, see, I retired from the industry completely um, about 20 years ago. And as of 20 years ago, even... Yes, even then, when I would go onto the lot to work for just a, you know a day, and I wasn't really interacting with any of the actual uh, production people or producers uh, who were working there, I still it still felt exactly the same way. And I was working at every major studio up up until that point. I mean, the work we did uh, was scattered amongst everywhere, and it just. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 very difficult to describe. I suppose if I sat down and tried to write an essay about it, I could be a little bit more eloquent. But there's just something about it, and so many people that you know from the history of working there that are still there that you run into, just you know, like going home. It was just always like going home. Yeah, and I I would agree. You would know better than me, I because you. You have so much more experience with the other studios than I, than I do, so you can compare. But in terms of whether it's still the still the same as as it was then, yeah, it, that's it. Still has that feel. It's such a pleasant um, campus, and everyone's very friendly. So I think that tradition has definitely continued. So yeah, that's good to know. And I, you, because people have like this 
Disney magic, you know, vision. Like I, I know I certainly do. I still, when I go there, I get, you know, I'm like a little kid. So it's, it's, it's nice to hear that, you know, that still atmosphere exists in uh, behind the scenes as well. And I, I know, Jim, I, I was watching some of your videos. Like I said, I also saw that you, you're one of your favorite movies is also one of my favorite Disney movies, The Happiest Millionaire. <laughs> Which, and, uh, although I, we have a different favorite song from there, you, you love Fortuosity. But now, can you, get, can you get Tommy Steele on one of your shows one day? <laughs> wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, I actually, because of those videos, um, the, the man that's writing his authorized biography it, it contacted me. So oh, that, wow. that book is going to be published in, in England very soon. I think you can, I think you can pre-order it on, on Amazon right now. So at least I hope to speak to him. Oh, that would be great. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to speak to Tommy, Tommy Steele himself, but um, who's, who's, uh, who's also quite elderly now, but, yeah, but uh, you know, apparently still very active and, 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 you know, thank God, very healthy and everything. So you're putting ideas in my head, so I'll have to talk. But <laughs> I've, I tried, was, I've tried reaching out as well. I cannot get, I cannot get contacts, but I, I have tried reaching out, so... <laughs> Oh, that's Tommy awesome. Steele. That's awesome. I've never, never talked so much about Tommy Steele in my life as the last, the last well, I, few I months. Could, it's great. I could watch that song, Let's Have a Drink on it, on a loop all day long. I, I love that song. So. I love it too. I love it too. Yes. <laughs> being I Irish so, helps. Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I was just saying being Irish helps. Oh. <laughs> well, you have, you have some, when watching your video, I mean, that's when I saw in your videos, you have, your how how large is your collection first of all i mean it's it looks enormous <laughs> interesting thing because i i know some collectors and my collection is nothing <laughs> compared to theirs so i've always thought mine is quite quite modest but it all depends on your point of view because i've certainly had many people say the same thing to me jonathan as you have said they're like oh my gosh your collection is so vast and i don't even really consider myself a collector i uh, especially at first, I would just get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I do have a lot of publications. I do have a lot of comic books, and I do have a lot of books. But to Maybe. me, that was that was just going along with what you know. That's my profession, so I don't look at it that way. And, and co in terms of comic books, there are comic book collectors, as you both know, who are who are completists. I mean, they have every issue of every you know, every title and every, you know, every Superman title and every, every Disney title, you know, and I have, I have a little of this and a little of that. Right. So I think the videos kind of give, to my mind, the videos give a, a false impression that it's much, much larger than it actually is. Uh, I have a lot of records, <laughs> uh, you know, I have a lot of Disney records, but I don't have Escape from Witch Mountain. I don't have that. <laughs> oh, that LP. Yeah, I, it's, I saw it. It's right there. <laughs> there, it there it is. I saw it. I saw it right there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh darn it! I still don't have that one. <laughs> well, good. Something you don't have. I mean, right. it is. I got the same impression, you know, from from your videos, and and I have to just touch on the Avon one, which I think is one of your most oh, yeah. recent ones. Yeah. The right. uh, Disney licensing for Avon. I right. was just my jaw was hanging open because I had that darn Mickey Mouse um, shampoo uh, container. Because <laughs> I, my, I, I have to assume, obviously, that my mother was buying from Avon at some point because we had the Snoopy dish soap dish that fit in his <laughs> belly, and then and I was fascinated by the Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, shampoo. that's so great to be here. And I don't. I didn't keep it because it was probably in my uh in my house before i started to think about uh you know collecting things like that but gosh it just it is so much fun to go through your videos and just revisit all of these things i mean i'm i am interjecting here upon your collection but yeah with the things the the toys you pulled out from the yeah. hanna barbera superheroes uh episode and and i have to thank you because i 
I had no recollection what a huge uh, cartoon Frankenstein Jr. was to me. And even seeing the image of him and hearing the title of it, I was like, okay, what is this show? And then you, the clip was played. I was, of course, I was riveted in front of my screen watching this show and Johnny oh. Quest. And, and, you know, obviously I'd rather you speak more to the content of your uh, YouTube channel, but it's so varied and it goes into so many wonderful areas of not only just Disney lore and um, history, but, you know, like Hanna-Barbera, which was, you know, gosh, I worked there a few times. Um, I used to drive by that building. Literally, it was, you know, it's so funny how LA is laid out. Everything is so spread out, but it was, it, it, it sat on, um, I think it's Barham Boulevard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for confirming. It's been quite a while, but I used to drive past it all the time and just think, boy, if I could just do a few more Hanna-Barbera cartoons, I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so cool to hear. Wow. Yeah. And of course, that's the thing. Um, I do love Disney most of all, of course, but I love all kinds of animation and all kinds of comics, all kind, you know, I just love everything. I just, I just, whatever it is, I love it. I'm totally into it of all kinds of movies and TV. So that's part of the idea behind the video series is that it gave, and also my blog that the video series kind of came out of, that that was an opportunity for me to talk and write about things that I don't get to do professionally very often at least so you know the peanuts comic strip and so many other things so it's fun to share things that are that are not disney related and that i don't get to talk about it very often unless i'm doing something like this so it's great it's great fun and hopefully showing that you know i know something beyond <laughs> beyond disney too <laughs> okay well with that we're going to do close part one of our chat with jim fanning uh join us next time for more about his youtube series Tolgywood. this is jonathan rosen with ike eisenman and see you next time and thanks for listening bye bye thank you for listening to pop culture retro where no one was hurt during the making of this podcast <laughs>